Final Fantasy XI was one of the more brutal MMOs in its heyday, often requiring a full group for simple tasks like leveling or even low level missions. In this video I'll be touching on a different side of how that affected my experience, with something that, for the most part, has been lost in modern online RPGs, solo. So hey guys, it's Hunt for Games, bringing you a healthy mix of videos on new releases in MMOs, and nostalgic trips to the classics that made us fall in love with games in the first place. Now before you guys call me out, I'm not saying soloing itself is gone from MMOs, far from it. If anything, it's more prevalent than it ever was, with most of the leveling experience being had in exactly that way. But that, that soloing is meaningless now. So hear me out, I mean, game design was once around grouping. Uh, soloing was a hard and unique challenge. You needed multiple players to achieve even mundane tasks. So when you were out soloing, it was it was special. You, there was danger. You realized that you didn't have a backup plan. There was only you. This could be boss fights, notorious monsters, farming for quest items, or even simple leveling. I can't tell you how many times I'd go out and just you know try to get that last little bit of experience by myself on, on some easy to kill either goblin pets or even just weak enemies. It gave more reason for me to level up their jobs too, because you know jobs could uniquely achieve alone what would take multiple people. A blue mage, for instance, could buff itself up and survive a difficult fight by hammering it down super fast with a bunch of strong spells, weapon skills, and, and skill chains. Whereas another job might not be able to take that at all. Like a, a thief might be able to evade for a longer period of time, but ultimately not do enough damage or be able to heal itself through some of the damage. It always is kind of a point of pride when I come up across a quest that required me, you know, to, to kill a certain number of enemies until I, I got a special drop from lizards or, or crabs or whatever it might have been, but I realized that I had a job that could go do it. Not that I didn't always want to pull in people, sometimes it was faster that way or just more fun, but it was nice if I wanted to work at it myself that I could, and it, it felt like an achievement that I'd leveled something that could do that without requiring to lean on other people. And that's part of the point, it gave me other reasons to level other jobs too. Jobs that could uniquely achieve alone what might normally take multiple players on, on various support, tank, damage dealing, and, and healing jobs. Jobs like Red Mage or, or Blue Mage were special because they could buff themselves. They could haste themselves, protect themselves, shell themselves, cocoon, you know, the works. Even Refresh obviously is a huge one. Whereas other jobs might be able to, to deal more damage in a quick amount of time or, or evade more attacks like a, a thief or a warrior or something, but they might not be able to, to heal themselves through various damage that the enemy is throwing at them, or, or survive or an, a, an evade certain debuffs that are thrown their way. I mean, it, it was countless the different ways that you could approach problems, and jobs that could take on enemies that others couldn't, it was always kind of a point of pride that you'd leveled that. Like, I thought it was awesome that I'd leveled Summoner and could take on certain things by carby kiting, or just whittling it down with, with Fenrir or Leviathan, and just pure unadulterated summoner strength, but another job just couldn't because they're dishing out too much damage on a player versus, you know, a summoned avatar. And that's just one reason that I enjoyed leveling multiple jobs, but it, it, soloing itself could also just be peaceful. It, it, it's kind of quiet and reflective. You could just practice your job at a slower pace without concern for how you're impacting others, exploring the vast world of Vanadeel with that little bit of a thrill knowing that you could easily get in over your head because you're out, you're out on your own. I always enjoyed every few levels, just kind of take a break, explore, farm, do something with my job and, and see how I'd grown stronger against enemies that I'd faced before and probably lost against. So it was cool watching that growth and being like, ah yeah, I couldn't even take this at all before, now I'm soloing these things with ease. And when it came to like leveling or even, you know, beating certain certain quest related notorious monsters, it was kind of fun knowing that you were going a little bit beyond the intent of the system. Not that, you know, Square Enix developers never expected anyone to solo or, or try to do things on their own, but the game was designed in a group mindset and it was cool kind of playing outside of the suggested rule set of those developers. If any of this is jiving with how you approach MMOs, I mean consider subscribing. We have discussions on topics like this all the time. And like the video if you ever pushed a job to the absolute limit to solo something that could be easily handled by even two or more people, just to see if you could. Because that brings up a next great amazing point, duos and trios were just an extension of this. It was so cool to know that you and one or maybe a couple other friends might be able to take something on that normally took possibly six or, or or far more people, either enduring intense attacks while slowly whittling away its HP, or with some kind of strange crazy strategy dealing a vicious amount of damage up front and just trying to kill it before it had a chance to retaliate. 
In MMOs these days, soloing is kind of a core aspect of the experience. Games are designed around it. You're allowed and encouraged to be able to experience the entire game by yourself while enjoying the activities of other players at various stages or, or parts of that game. Final Fantasy XI wasn't like that at all. You had, you had to almost a fault be with other players for almost all of it. But because soloing is now a core experience that everybody can enjoy, it's not special or interesting. It, it's less exciting when somebody says like, oh, I soloed something in 14, even if it's actually a pretty crazy achievement that they managed to do it. I'm just kind of like, okay, well, you know, it, it's not very exciting. I just don't quite get that thrill or excitement that I used to when I hear stories of somebody soloing some crazy difficult mission boss or, or notorious monster equivalent. Not because it's not a cool achievement, but I just know at my at my core that the game isn't designed around group play that the way that Final Fantasy XI was. Now some of you might be saying, well, uh, what about trust? They introduced trust in Final Fantasy XI, basically everybody now has access to a full party and that's kind of what made me want to do this video. I went out to get some footage and I was just kind of smacking some stuff with Samurai by myself without trusting the party and I'd forgotten how cool that was. It was just, it was quiet. The enemies slowly waiting to attack and make their moves. I'm slowly waiting to attack and make my moves because I don't have like four bard hastes and you know spell haste and everything else. It just it felt like core Final Fantasy XI again for a second, and I realized how much I missed just running around by myself hitting things in the face. And I know I could still do that. I don't have to summon trusts all the time, but the problem is it's so effective at you know it, it, making the process. A little bit more expedient and it's just so much safer there really isn't a reason not to with a full party always at my fingertips things that used to make jobs interesting and unique aren't really as exciting self haste everybody can get haste now from koromoru whenever you want uh, refresh protect and shells all easily obtained for any job and that actually frustrated me a little bit as soon as i came back because jobs that i used to love and be so excited about for the unique things that they personally could employ that, that other jobs didn't even have access to no longer was really as important. Everybody has a full party of six and can have any support job they want. It used to be kind of cool to, to see that rare Corsair buff because I, I wasn't really friends with many Corsairs and I very rarely partied with them. So whenever I did, I was like, oh, it's so weird having these icons of dice up in uh, my little icon in my uh, personal buffs. And I, I love that. I thought it was so cool. But now I can have a Corsair whenever I want. <laughs> So I'm much less interested in leveling that job because I know I have access to everything that that job can do while maintaining jobs that I'm more familiar with. I'm not saying the new system is bad. I understand why trusts were implemented and I think it was super important to be done in the way it was done. It's allowed me to play the game in a way that I never could before and I definitely appreciate that. But in the back of my mind, I'll always miss wandering the wilds by myself knowing that I picked and tailored my job and sub job choice to be able to effectively hold my own without support. While it is cool going toe to toe with Promethea now with a full party of trust and knowing that like I, I've tailored that trust setup to most accurately reflect what my abilities are and take down Promethea. I'll always remember the time that Hayden and I tried to go in at level 75 and take down Promethea with just the two of us and forgot that it had a second form. For a little bit we thought we'd won. So what are your thoughts? Are the days of soloing as I remember it gone forever or will the likes of Pantheon and similar games bring it back into the limelight? Question of the week, do MMOs with a focus on grouping need a soloing class, or will one just always naturally emerge through creativity of the community? Keep on the lookout for more videos like this each week, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in more videos like this, think about subscribing. And if you already have, don't forget to click that little bell next to the sub button to get notified when new videos go live. Hit me up in the comments with your thoughts on this video, or come hang out and chat with me on Twitch every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And definitely look me up on Twitter or Instagram and hunt for games to keep up with what else I've got going on. See ya!